centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida Sol y viento Hello, my name is Patrick Barnard. It's the winter of 2008-2009. Welcome to the sixth edition of the Pimento Report. Today, the Pimento Report is going to do something different. We're going to give you a film preview. Together with RTS Canada, we've co-produced a very unusual film featuring the Montreal playwright David Fenaria. This 41-minute film, directed by Alec G. McLeod, is called Fenaria's War, a haunting piece of anti-war theatre written by David Fenario and read by him to friends in his Montreal apartment. In Fenario's one-man reading, the author performs all the voices, and this gritty portrait takes us all the way back to World War I to give people of today a record of what the war to end all wars was really like. The Montreal premiere of Fenaria's War will take place on Saturday, February 21, 2009 at 7 p.m. in Concordia University's J.A. de Seve Cinema. But right now, though, we want to give you the feeling of this film dramatic monologue consisting of three voices. The first voice, read by Fenario, is that of a young reporter in the 1970s, Jerry Nines. It's Remembrance Day, 1977, and Jerry Nines goes into a large downtown hotel wondering about the word cenotaph. Do you know what cenotaph means? I looked it up, got my old notes here. It means a monument to one who is buried elsewhere. Buried elsewhere, like 61,000 of them elsewhere. Canadian soldiers who got killed in World War I. I'm talking about, yeah, that many dead, not counting the wounded. In the old-fashioned hotel, reporter Jerry Nines meets Harry Rosie Rollins, a World War I vet with bushy white hair and a growling voice. Nines watches Rollins ordering a drink. Hey, doctor! Hey, doctor! And when somebody calls a waiter doctor, you know you're dealing with somebody. <laughs> hey, doctor, ma'am shows is sick. Yeah, ma'am shows, uh, what are you drinking? What am I drinking? I'm drinking whatever he wants to drink. That's what I'm drinking. And he's drinking a uh, Bushmill Irish with cream soda as a chaser, because beer makes me burp. Okay, makes you burp. Okay, cream soda. And I'm uh, I'm this no-ass, skinny, 22-year-old Jerry Nines, and he's Harry, Harry Rollins, just in town for the day, staying upstairs at the King 80. I was coming into town, he says, for the occasion, you know, Remembrance Day, because he was in the First World War. So I tell him, hey, look, Ace Reporter, me, soon to be international media star, can I ask you a few questions? Get a few quotes, because, uh, yeah, I want to... Put what you said in a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the idea, a newspaper. Well, I'll tell you what, he says. I'm here and you're here, and now you got me thinking because I'm here. Maybe I want to tell a story about why I'm here. Rosie Rollins begins taking Jerry Nines through World War I and tells him about the 1915 Battle of the Luce in France. Luce. Loop the Luce. And we just walked into it, 1915. Still not wearing helmets. Can you believe that? And whoosh, we get the whistle. Whoosh, and it's everybody up the ladder, over the top, into this really gooey, thick stuff. Just cluck. Sucks the boots off you, cluck. I'm really sinking down this stuff, because gluck. I'm part of a three-man machine gun squad, cluck. With one guy carrying the ammo, another guy on the tripod, and me, I'm stuck with the goddamn machine gun. Swing, swing, swing. He's dodging the shells, I let Charlie Chaplin. And I falls over backwards with this fucking thing. Good luck. And I'm trying to get out from under it when this officer comes up with this big Webley in his hand. Those big Webley pistols that can't hit anything more than 10 feet away. 
But that's okay, because those guns were meant to be used on us. Young guy, first lieutenant, trying to act like Schwing. He doesn't have piss running down his legs. Schwing. And he says something like, where's your unit, soldier? Schwing. And I'm about to say, who the fuck knows when? Splat. He ain't there no more. Splat. Just gone. Gone. Exploding in a kind of red mist. But the Webley's still there, sort of still turning in the air. But as I'm telling you this, I realized, no, it was all gone, Webley and all. Just gone, not there no more. You know, I guess I'm an old fart too, because there's some things I don't think I want to remember that uh, come back at me still in my dreams. No, no, I don't remember it like a dream. It, it comes back to me like something, I'm in it again, I'm right there. What do you call them? Hallucinations. Back there, in the war, in the past, Rosie Rollins remembers. He falls in the mud, loses consciousness, probably because of a concussion. He awakes back in a trench and meets the man who becomes his great friend, Rummy Robidoux. And this French voice says, Hey, Rosie, Rosie, you hear me? Tu m'attends? Rosie. And I open my eyes. Say moi, Rummy, he says, Rummy. Where's Eddie, I says. Said Paul. Jimmy Mackay. Said Paul. Oh, I says. I think I'm going to sleep, I says. And no, he says, no, 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 not now, no sleep. Sticks this cigarette in my mouth. Can you light it, he says. And I look down at my hand, laying there on my leg, and I picks up my hand and puts it in the pocket, and I pull out the matches, and I light the cigarette. Okay, Rosie, he says, I got to go now. And that's how I got to know him, Rummy, Robbie Doo. The story moves forward to 1917. And now it's Easter 1917, and they're planning something that's supposed to end the war that's supposed to be already over. That Jimmy Ridge that everybody likes to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Jimmy fucking Ridge. The birth of a nation, they called it somewhere. I didn't see nobody getting born. Just a lot of people dying for no good stupid reason at all. Because it turns out that goddamn Jimmy Rich stands out like a goddamn uh, bullseye with every goddamn alley man in the goddamn alley man universe swanging away at it. Swang, swang, swang. But like Rummy Robbie do said, when the whole thing is stupid, well, you just can't do anything right anymore except getting us killed like dumb, stupid animals, like ordering us to walk out on the highway like skunks and raccoons, bath. Guts all over dead before you know it. At this point, Rummy Robidoux begins to organize a mass protest among rank-and-file soldiers, and he begins by talking to his friend, Rosie Rollins. Rosie, on peut faire quelque chose, we gotta do something. Rummy Robidoux goes on to organize a very strong protest among the men. What happens to him? And what happens to his great friend, Harry Rosie Rollins? I am afraid we're going to leave you in suspense. To find out how this story concludes, you should come to Concordia's De Sev Cinema on February 21st, 2009 at 7 p.m. Or you can get a DVD from www.outerwork.net. For the moment, this is Patrick Barnard saying thanks to David Fenario and goodbye for now from the Pimento Report. Sol y viento pa su vida.